who've performed in so many places, from streets and pubs to out of the alleyways to Navy Street, a whole range of the small theatres. I think we probably covered them over the last decade. And of course, it's also a tribute to the work of David Williamson. And I guess in asking David to this place, this small theatre, in some ways it acknowledges that multi-skilled theatre workers can emerge and can be fostered and become great artists in small venues. So welcome, and I'll hand over to um, Mr Trevor Brown, the Deputy Chancellor.
established an international reputation as a prolific writer and cultural commentator. He has, in the broadest sense, through his work in writing for the stage and film and television, made an outstanding contribution to the community both here in Australia and overseas. Following his early education in Bensdale, Victoria, and his secondary education at University High School, David Williamson completed a degree in mechanical engineering at Monash University. He then worked as a design engineer, undertook some postgraduate studies in psychology, and joined the then Swinburne Institute of Technology, where he lectured in thermodynamics and social psychology for several years. These formative years provided the background and the stimulus which led to his career as a playwright. In the early 70s, he became the most sought-after playwright in Australia. Some of his best-known and most successful plays are The Removalists, The Club, Don's Party, The Department, A Handful of Friends, and Travelling North. His more recent plays include Dead White Males, Sanctuary, and Heretic, his most recent play, which has just finished a successful season here in Melbourne. His plays have been translated into many languages and performed internationally, including major productions in London, Los Angeles, New York, and Washington. David Williams's plays are well known for the amount of research which has gone into their preparation. For example, in writing Heretic, he spent considerable time reading and researching in the area of anthropology. He also places significant value on his engineering background and the role it has played in stressing the importance of the need to find empirical evidence to support a particular position. Another spin-off of value attributed to his engineering experiences is the benefit gained from scientific methods in sharpening one's thinking. David Williamson's work as a writer has led to his involvement in a wide range of roles within the theatre and film and television industry. He has a prolific record as a screenwriter, has produced many original screenplays, and has adapted his own stage work for film. He has also written several movies for television and plays for radio, as well as directing plays and films of his own work and that of other writers. David Williamson's work has been widely recognized within the industry generally as evidenced by the various Australian and international awards he has received, including the British George Devine Award for the Removalists in 1971, this was the first time the award had been made outside the United Kingdom. The London Evening Standard Award in 1973 for the most promising new playwright of the year. The Melbourne Critics Eric Award in 1972. The Australian Writers Guild Audrey Award on 11 occasions. And the Australian Film Institute Award for Best Screenplay four times. David Williamson's career also features specific contributions by way of service to the community and his profession. Some examples are his appointment as a commissioner of the Australian Broadcasting Commission in 1978-79, and as president of the Australian Writers Guild and chairman of the Australian National Playwrights Conference in 1979-80. His service to the community was recognized in 1983 when he was appointed an officer of the Order of Australia for his service to the arts as playwright and screenwriter. His contribution to the arts is uniformly recognized through the awarding of an honorary degree of Doctor of Letters from both Monash and Sydney universities. All in all, David Williamson's achievements as a writer and his contribution to the arts generally have been outstanding. It is fitting that this contribution and service to the community should be recognized by Swinburne as this is an institution with which he has had a significant association over a considerable period of time. Mr. Deputy Chancellor, it is with pleasure that in accordance with Statute 14 of Swinburne University of Technology, I present to you David Keith Williamson for admission to the degree of Doctor of the University Honoris Causa on the grounds of distinguished service to the community.
Dr. Williamson, we're proud of your association with Swinburne and we're proud of your achievements. I now invite you to address the audience. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Williamson. Not a dead white male, a late white male. Um, <laughs> I'm very sorry, there's a play by Samuel Beckett called Waiting for Goddard, in which the, uh, the protagonists just sit there and wait and wait and wait. I'm sorry I inflicted that on you tonight. Uh, I actually went to the wrong campus. When I taught at Swinburne, it was at a place, it was at Hawthorne, and my mindset uh, is a bit rigid. And uh, when I got in the cab, I just said, Take me to Swinburne at Hawthorne. And after 20 minutes wandering around, asking forlornly where the David Williamson Theatre was. <laughs> Being told they'd never heard of it. Uh, not me. Uh, uh, I got the message that we were at the wrong place, but I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I got here finally, and I'm enormously honoured. It's quite awesome to come and find a theatre on such a well-designed and such a useful theatre uh, named after you. It's an enormous honour, and I am, I am touched and moved, if a little late. I'm still, um, I, um, um, I'm going to say I don't know what to say, but I will say something. Um, it, it, uh, it's been a long time, as you know, since I was teaching at Swinburne, um, and I was teaching engineering in the engineering school. Uh, um, some people were cruel enough to say that I only took the job there so I could do research for my subsequent play called The Department, but that is, that's not true. Um, I took the job for the best of reasons because I loved teaching, which is a theatrical, um, um, well, it's a theatrical performance in one sense. Uh, I loved the staff I worked with and I really enjoyed the students and I had a wide variety of students. Uh, every now and again, on a plane, some um, chap in a suit will come up and put a business card in my hand and say, uh, Mr. Williamson, you taught me thermodynamics. And, uh, <laughs> So it still happens, and, and I remember a particular um, young man who went on to become a, a rock star. He said, I haven't been to your thermo class uh, for six weeks, I'm sorry Mr. Williamson, I've had women problems. And I said, oh really? And I started saying yes to the difficulties of relationships. He said, no, 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 I've had an intensive course of penicillin. <laughs> so I had a very a buried uh, uh, student. Uh, not there. Um, but they were happy years. Um, and But some people have said to me, well, how come you uh, start as an engineer and become a playwright? There seems to, be, seems to be nothing in common between the two activities. Well, the truth was I never really wanted to become an engineer. I always really wanted to become a writer. But it was the, uh, in those days, you were advised to do something um, to get a qualification to fall back on, was the phrase, and I fell back on that. But I, um, I do admit to a certain amount of pilfering while I was here. In the National Library are the first drafts of, of my plays, and they're all written on Swinburne examination booklets. <laughs> um, the, uh, there is a gulf. Uh, science is one of the great achievements of the human mind, and science is a fairly recent uh, achievement. It's um, a way of assuming that there is a real world out there, we can test this real world, we can find out what it's all about, we can create hypotheses, we can test those hypotheses by uh, empirical measurement, and we can get closer and closer to models of truth about the physical world and about the laws of the physical world. Um, the arts, on the other hand, are really about the human species in a, a non-rational mood, if you like. Um, it's the human brain exploring its own creativity and in the sciences we have a convergent model of thinking, we have a problem. We have to solve that problem, we have to find the answer to that problem, we do it by rational, deductive, empirical methods and we come to the one single conclusion, the one correct answer to that problem. We, we design a strut, it's got to take a certain load, there's only one certain load that it's got to take and we find that answer. The arts are a different uh, kettle of fish. The arts, um, in a sense, pose another sort of problem. They give you an empty stage and say, fill that stage for two hours in a way that's going to engage, delight, enlighten, uh, and uh, enrapture us. 
there are a million, a trillion different ways, there are a trillion different solutions to this problem. Try and find one that is going to be meaningful to us. Because it is uh, amazing to be a human being when you think of it, what are we? And that's what the, what the arts partly explore. Well, we're a, we're a primate that's been 15 years, 15 million years, <laughs> some of us have only been 15 years in evolution, but uh, 15 million years in evolution, we have a brain that is not uh, locks tabula rasa, it's not a blank slate just waiting to be written on, there are certain presets in there, and, uh, and part of what we are, and part of the wonderful thing about what we are, is we have the deep emotional responses uh, that are signals to us that we're doing something right or wrong, basically, those signals. Um, uh, or we were doing something right or wrong 15 million years ago. Um, and that wonderful mechanism we've got up there interacts with our culture. Our culture imposes lots of rules and ideologies on us, uh, and uh, we're all different, and what comes out is that a great flux of humanity of individuals uh, that the arts starts exploring, starts saying what's inside there, why do our emotions respond to certain things, um, why do we feel joy, why do we feel depression, we don't really know in a way, but the arts brings us closer to an understanding of ourselves. Uh, um, and the arts also gives us a chance to wonder about the, the sheer, well glory for a better word, of being human and having these capacities. In our everyday life, more often than not, we charge on with blinkers on, earning a living, doing things on automatic pilot and never really thinking about what it is we're doing. We just have to succeed or do this or do that. We have to earn a crust. The arts gives us that wonderful chance to step back and contemplate the human condition, for want of a better word. Contemplate what it is that we are and take ourselves out of that everyday world and say, yes, I... I've behaved like that. Why? Um, I've done that. Or hear a beautiful cadenza of music and say that that touches me. I don't quite know why, but it makes me feel a delight in being human. So the arts transports us above the pure material plane. It takes us to that overworked word, the spiritual plane, whatever that is. But I think it's something to do with that sense of awe that we have this amazing emotional and intellectual mechanism there in our heads that responds to the complexity and uh, brilliance of the world around us. So I'm terribly glad to um, find that the suspicion that's traditional towards the creative arts on university campuses is at last melting away. For a long while it was only convergent thinkers that were welcome on campuses only those who could find specific answers and the correct answers to correct problems. Now the campuses are opening up and realizing that the creative endeavor is every bit as important to humanity and the experience of being human as the convergent thinking, uh, because the arts works off bouncing idea off idea, association, divergence, um, <laughs> uh, multiplicity. And um, I'm particularly uh, pleased here at Swinburne that a theatre has been made for me because after all these years I've decided that what I love doing most is writing for the theatre. I'm a theatre writer. I love and always have that feeling that it's one of the last great community activities. That actors come in, live human beings, not two dimensional images on the screen, live human beings come in <laughs> and show their skills, their creativity in front of you, a live audience. And it's a one-off event that never happens again. You see something quite unique and special that night, and you participate in a communal backwards and forwards feedback between those performers and you. Uh, and in a world in which Bill Gates tells us that the future is atomized, lonely little selves sitting in front of their computers, surfing the internet, uh, Bill Gates is telling us that community is over, the death of community. Uh, we don't need it anymore. All we need is our PC screen, and we never need to get together again. We never need to see other nasty human beings except their little uh, dots on their computer screen. But uh, theatre is one of those areas that works against the tide, a warm and communal experience, and I love it. And I'm particularly on, uh, well, I'm particularly glad that Swinburne is promoting this great art form teaching it so skillfully and providing for it so well, and I'm particularly honored that 
a place where all this is done is being named after me. It's an overwhelming feeling, and I thank you very much.